Hello, and welcome to Skype Career Talks, why we display why it's great to learn with us and communicate. I'm your host, David James. We have a great lineup of conversations ahead of us. Today, I'm super excited to be speaking with our guest, Zach Morrison. Zach Morrison is a comedy writer and filmmaker from New Jersey. His work includes writing and directing the TV pilot, Canusa Street, and the Emmy award-winning short musical, Everything's Fine, A Panic Attack in D Major. He has also created sketches and celebrity videos for major brands like BuzzFeed, Tasty, Esquire, and MTV. Zach has also worked as a writer's assistant and script coordinator in late night comedy with past credits, including The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, The Kids Tonight Show, Late Night with Seth Meyers, and Saturday Night Live. Zach has an MFA in television writing from Columbia University and a BA from Rutgers University, where he double majored in journalism, media studies, and digital filmmaking. He is also a proud member of the Rutgers Kaplan School Society. Without further ado, we welcome Zach Morrison. Zach, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you being here and being able to share your career journey and perspective throughout the industry with us. So to kick it off, give us a brief overview of your career journey. <laughs> oh, man. I, so like, I'll just unpack my entire life story. Um no, so like, you know, I, I'm a comedy writer um, and filmmaker. I, I got my start at Rutgers. I mean, I, I uh, you know, worked at, at RUTV and, and worked for um, what's now student life. No, I'm sorry, student affairs, media and marketing. I uh, was sort of one of the first students to take classes at the, Mason, the now Mason Gross BFA film program. And I also did journalism and media studies. So it was kind of like all over the place. Um, but I always wanted to be a filmmaker. And that's kind of always been always been my thing. And so, you know, in between classes and actually during class and I'd skip class to go shoot, you know, comedy sketches and projects like with friends and, and stuff at Rutgers. And, and, you know, I've kind of like, that's sort of where I got, I got started. And then, um, you know, while I was a student, I, I interned at a couple places at, at MTV and I, I spent a couple years in and out of MTV for a little bit and then worked on, you know, some larger projects as a, as a PA, I think my first job during the, um, one of like the journalism uh, like internship semesters was uh, working at um, on a sports documentary ESPN 30 for 30 uh, about Bo Jackson. So that was like my first PA job in the city. And, you know, I kind of started building up a portfolio. And then by the time I graduated Rutgers, the, the thought was like, okay, I can either move to New York and do like the PA thing or rent myself out as a camera operator or something, or I could focus on writing and directing and, and, all signs kind of pointed to me wanting to be, you know, to be a writer and focus on making my own stuff. So I decided to go to grad school to get my MFA. Uh, and I went to Columbia and spent four lovely years in grad school and living in New York, but still making my own stuff and doing a lot of my own projects. Um, and that's when I started working in in late night as a, sorry, I was a writer's PA and a writer's intern and then moved up to writer's assistant at Jimmy Fallon and did script department at Saturday Night Live. And, and so, and all this was happening while I was doing grad school and kind of making my own films and shorts and stuff. Um, and then my, my grad school thesis project uh, was a musical comedy um, called Everything's Fine. And it, it won an Emmy in, in 2019. That kind of brought me out to Los Angeles and got me my manager and kind of started, started the ball, you know, in, in, in Hollywood stuff. Um, and, and I, you know, fast forward, you know, just 2020 was a great year and, and fast forward to now. And um, I just finished production on my first television pilot and that's called Canusa Street. It's like a half hour sitcom, workplace sitcom that takes place on the U.S. Canada border. And we're in the process of trying to sell the show and, and make more. And, you know, there's been a fun of, I've uh, been a bunch of crazy fun projects along the way. So it's kind of been like one of these kind of all over the place, but anyone trying to work in TV, that's like par for the course, you know? So um, it's been a bit of fun, fun journey so far. And you have a rather interesting career. I mean, just mentioning the pilot, I mean, just the whole process of, you know, getting a pilot off the ground. I mean, nobody realizes how much work is put into just getting one episode of television and then waiting um, for a full pickup, right? But you also have an interesting um, 
career. Um, and I, I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, the kind of jobs, the kind of gigs, but also what does a day look like for you, right? Because um, you have a rather different career where some go into the corporate life that could be a nine to five um, s- sort of schedule. What does a day and a, also a schedule perhaps uh, look like for you? Well, today uh, in particular, it looks like uh, doing a whole lot of nothing, sitting in my pajamas in my parents' house in East Brunswick. Um, but no, I mean, like it kind of, it varies, you know? I mean, there there are, there's days when I'm working on my own projects where I'm either here at home or, or wherever I'm living at the moment in time and and writing or, or brainstorming or editing a project or shooting stuff. Uh, I mean, and I'm always kind of doing like, seven things at once, right? Like currently at the moment, I'm in post-production on my comedy pilot and I'm editing it, like I'm cutting it myself. So that's a lot of time. And and thankfully we're picture locked and now we're going back and forth with colorists and sound designers and and doing all the post stuff. So that's kind of like one thing. And then I'm also editing another project that we shot at Comic-Con a couple of weeks ago. Oh my God, like a week ago, because that just happened. My brain's fried. Um, I'm also writing a new project right now and I'm producing like a commercial series in the city, like kind of half remotely, half in person. So there's like seven, there's always like seven things happening at once. Um, but then other times there's, there's days where I'm on like a show and, and like most recently I did uh, like I was a script coordinator on one of those Andy Cohen, like Bravo reality show reunions. Right. And so that's like, a, that's like two or three days of like 12 hour, 14 hour days. And um, you know, if, if there's like, we did kids tonight show last summer, which was one month of work. Again, I was a script coordinator on that. And that was like, uh, you know, that was kind of nine to five because it's kids and we're in 30 rock. And so it, like, it, it's totally changing all the time, but the only constant is that there's, seven projects happening at once. And so it's kind of like juggling what that day to day is like. And, you know, it, it's sort of the exact opposite of a kind of like corporate media nine to five, like going to work at like 1515 as a, you know, on air promos coordinator at Viacom. Like that's a totally different, you know, lifestyle than being a <laughs> unemployed comedy writer. So um, you know, it's, it's kind of nuts, but, uh, you know, I've always been able to, it, it's always been about me doing my projects and, and like the stuff that I'm doing has always kind of been the thing that opened doors for me. So, you know, I tend to over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, I've learned to be able to trust the nothingness and to like, trust the fact that like, I don't have a job, like a job right now. I don't have health insurance. I'm not making a paycheck right this moment. But that time that I'm spending working on these seven other things, that's like, you know, through some way, shape or form, that's going to move me to the next phase of whatever. So it's um, it's terrifying and exciting, like all at the same time. But I, I wish I, I wish I had like a, a, a day to day, you know, with like a schedule and like a lunch break and that stuff. But I don't think I ever will. Well, no, it's interesting. Um, and we'll go more into, you know, the skills that's needed to go into the industry. But I'm curious, um, because some students um, might want to be a writer, some students might want to be a director. Would you encourage um, students and people who are aspiring to be writers, filmmakers, storytellers to try out different positions within the industry, rather than focusing on just one track or one path? I mean, I feel like, it depends, you know, um, it, I, 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 it, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Like that's, that's kind of the hard thing, right. Is like, there's so m- many paths that you can take and there's so many different like avenues that th- there is like, there is no one way to move forward. And it kind of just depends on like who you are and what you want to do. But I will say that if, you know, if you want to be, a like, a, a, a producer, that's a very different route than someone wanting to be a writer. And, um, y- you know, it's, it's like whatever, whatever it is, you want to put yourself in a situation, in a position where you're able to do specifically that thing that you want to do. Um, I, I mean, if, if you want to be a writer, you have to write, right? Like, like there's no, there's no way around it. You, you don't like fall into a writing gig just from like, sending positive vibes into the universe. It's like, no, you have to actually write, like do the work and write stuff. Uh, I mean, one of the 
the, probably the, one of the best pieces of advice I got was it was from Seth Myers when I was the writer's PA there. I mean, you know, I kind of asked him that question, like, hey, I want to be a writer. What do I do? And and first he was like, well, A, stop saying you're an aspiring writer because there's no, they're like, there's no such thing as an aspiring writer. You're either writing or you're not. You know, it, it's like, uh, like Yoda, like do or do not. There is no try. Like that's kind of the, and it's, that's a mentality you have to work yourself into first. It's like the only writer is right. And therefore I have to be writing if I want to be a writer. Same with directing, like directors direct and there's no, the, the, the reason I write stuff is so I can direct them. Like no one's sick, like calling me up saying, Hey Zach, can you direct this thing that someone else did maybe someday down the road? Like, that'd be nice. You know, if that happens, but um, you know, uh, until that moment, it's like, I have to kind of make my own projects in order to do the thing. So I, I that's kind of just been the only way I know how to operate is just by like doing it and not waiting for someone to call you up and, offer you the job because they never will, right? Like you just right. kind of have to make the opportunities for yourself. That's interesting. That brings me to my next question um, in terms of talking about skill sets. Um, what type of skill sets um, or rather personality as well do you think students should be practicing and rather honing in or rather um, positioning their mind to go into? Um, you kind You have to be a crazy person. Like, like you have to... Cause like everything in, in this industry is going to tell you, don't do it. Stop. This is insane. Right. Like a people in your life are going to tell you, don't do it. Stop. This is insane. Um, you, you know, the idea of like, I, I, you mean I have to like quit my full time, like pencil pushing data entry job because I don't have enough time in my life to write my own material. Oh, like, damn, like what do I do? Like, that's insane. So like, you just, ha you have to commit to doing it. And inherently it's kind of like, it's objectively crazy in order to want to pursue this industry as a creative, because like every mechanic of the industry from, from executives, from just jobs, from a lifestyle, like everything is going to be getting in your way. And so you have to, you have to commit to it. Like if you can see yourself doing anything else in the universe and being like potentially happy, then go do that because this is not for you. Um, but you know, if, if you can, like, if you can accept that there's going to be like a lot of this and a lot of rejection and a lot of people telling you no, and if you can handle that, then then that's fine. And so like, I think that skill set, like, just being able to handle the thing, like that's kind of super important. Um, and, you know, outside of that, like, it's also a matter of like getting into the habit of waking up in the morning, putting clothes on and doing the work is also an important thing like because again like you're only going to get that script written if if you write it right like you're only it's only going to happen if you do it and there are so many reasons to wake up in the morning to not do it like there's so many excuses that you can come up with to not do that thing oh oh i have to go to work oh i have to go to school oh i have to go to to this or i i, I want to do this today or whatever and like there's so many of those things and eventually you just have to like you have to force yourself to do the work and that takes it, it's taken me years to learn how to do that. And I still struggle with that. Like kind of my, my status quo is sitting at my computer, like frozen with anxiety and paralysis. And like being able to fight through that is in and of itself a skill set. Um, and, 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 you know, and at the end of the day, if your work's good, people are going to notice, you know? And so th there really isn't like, yeah, I mean, like on, on the technical side, yeah, you have to learn you know, how to use final draft. And you, if you're an editor or a direct a filmmaker, you have to learn how to use a camera and edit and all that stuff. But it's, I think first and foremost, it's the mentality of, I have, I can't do anything else. Like if I don't do this, I'm not fulfilling my life purpose, you know, and it's very existential, but um, you know, you, you have to have that drive. And I think that's the most important skill to have. So what would you tell students who want to, perhaps they're looking into the field. Is there one way to enter the field? How would they go about um, entering? The no, there's, there's, no, there's no one way. And that's kind of the hard part is like, there's no answer to that question. Um, Cause like, again, you can go 10,000 different ways. I went to grad school. Other people can lock themselves in a cabin in the woods and write reservoir dogs. You know, like there's just, there's so many different ways in people can do like if on comedy, you can do stand up. If you're a filmmaker, you can make shorts. If if you're a writer, you can write for like in a publication. Like there's so many different ways. And 
there that's kind of it's kind of chaos in order to think of like what's that like what's the path that i'm supposed to take and what's more important is just doing something like whatever it is just like do do something you like and that's and again, I know that's a non-answer, but I've been like, as a student, I would always hear from people. So I would ask them like, oh, how do I, like, what do I do? How do I get started? How do I get my foot in the door? And everybody, every studio executive, every like development person, every representative, like everybody was like, just do your thing. Whatever it is you're doing, keep doing it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cute. But like, what's the real answer? You know, like, like what's, what's the secret like sauce, you know? And after... 10 years, the answer is that is like, shit, they were right. You know, like that is the answer. You just have to keep doing, making your stuff, making your thing. Cause we're artists, right. And that's what we do is we make stuff. Um, sometimes we get hired to make other people's stuff and sometimes we're unemployed and that means we can make our stuff. And, and, and it's just, it, it's that like the repetition of like, I played sports, you know, you know, and I, I sat the bench in football cause I was awful, but I played volleyball at Rutgers and, and it's like the, the idea of like going to the gym and going through the reps and doing the work and like putting in the workout and, and just keeping it going. Like that is sort of the, you know, that's the mindset of, of writing and of just making your own projects. So I don't know. I like, it, I would say to students, just, you know, what, do what excites you because, you know, then it's exciting and, and then you can, then you want to do more, you know? And, and that's, I don't know. I, I know that's like a non-answer, but like after, after doing this for however long, it's like, that's kind of what everything keeps coming back, back to is like, are you, are you working on something? Are you making something? Oh, what do you have? Oh, what else do you have? Oh, what are you, like, what are you working on is the question that you're going to be asked all the time. And you have to have an answer to that. Because if you don't have an answer to like, what are you working on, then the conversation's over. So I would say like, whatever it is that you do, whether it's like TV or film or documentary or news or reporting or vlogging or web or whatever, like have a thing that you're working on. So that way, when that conversation does start, you can talk about it. To the question on topic of networking, how crucial is networking as well as having a social media presence or a website presence or just having a LinkedIn profile to showcase to people? Yeah, I, I hate the fact that I have all of those social media. Like, I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, but you found me through LinkedIn and this wouldn't be happening if I wasn't on there. And like Twitter is like a hellhole succubus of a life drain but here we are like that's now the platform for writers that's like linkedin for writers right now is twitter for some reason and instagram is a place where i'm putting photos and videos and stuff and youtube is where i put sketches and there's just so like you just have to exist everywhere yeah. you know and it's crazy it's terrible um but so that's like that it's just a thing you have you have to learn to learn to love it learn to deal with it it's like anyone who says like oh i'm not on social media you're irrelevant in right. this industry. You know, if, if you don't exist online, no one cares about you. So yeah, one day I wish I could be freaking like JJ Abrams, who, you know, his website is a black page and that's it. And he has no, like, he's like ghost, but he does stuff like that would be great to one day be able to not have to spend hours out of my life every day, like tweeting jokes and posting pictures that I've taken, but here we are. Um, so you just, you have to, like, you have to be on there because you have to have a place to show your work, right? Like if you don't have a portfolio, if you don't have, you know, a place where you can say, like you meet someone at like a film festival or a networking event or whatever, and if you don't have a place, like you're not going to carry around your work with you physically. So you have to exist somewhere. I don't care where it is. You can exist on any platform, but it, you have to be somewhere. Um, and the more places you are, the more opportunity those six degrees of Kevin Bacon can overlap and you can connect with someone, but like, it's all, it's all networking. Um, I, I've never, I've never gotten a job through applying for the job. I've had to, I've every job I've had from the time I've graduated Rutgers until 2022 has been someone emailing me or calling me saying, Hey, do you want me to put you in touch with someone for this job? And then I go for the interview and they're like, okay, you have the job, but legally we have to have you apply for the job. That is how every job under the sun has happened. And it's always been through someone I met at Rutgers, someone I met at Columbia, someone I met through the previous job that I worked on, who I met from someone that I met at Rutgers. Like it's just, it's always, it's always come back to the network. Um, I've never, ever gotten a gig from cold applying 
on a job board. Cause nine times out of 10, especially in media, cause I don't know how they get away with it, but like, you know, like NBC, any job that's on the NBC job board is filled already yeah. <laughs> and they have to post it legally. So don't quote me on that. I'm not like an official source. Don't like run this over to Lauren Michaels and say, oh, well, you know, he said that. So, you know, it has to be true. Like don't, but that's just in my experience, every, like every job, it's all through someone connecting you and, and the network. And, and that's kind of like how it, how it goes. So, um, and, you know, I, I like, I don't know if, I don't know if I, I can't think of a job that I got through just applying. Um, so the network, like, that's all that matters is like building your network and making friends and like networking, what's this horizontally? Yeah. Networking like horizontally instead of vertically. Cause like vertical networking, that's great. Like, yeah, if you can like be in the room with someone and shake their hand and introduce yourself, they're not going to care. They're going to, you know, they have the people like, I hate when I'm at like a festival or something and like the celebrity talents in the room and like everyone bum rushes them. Cause it's just, they don't want it. Like they want to go get lunch and like have a beer and just breathe for a minute. So it, you know, when you get the chance to have that conversation, obviously do it. Cause you never know. And I've had some really good networking through like bumping shoulders with someone and striking up a human conversation and not like a networking conversation. But what's more important is like making friends, friends who are going to like rise up in the industry with you. Cause that's the person that's going to get you, that's going to call you up and say, Hey, do you want this job? Not like the executive that you meet at the place. Right. So networking, it's, it's like super important and you just have to learn to love it. You know? So that brings us to our last question. I want to know what any piece of advice or wisdom would you tell yourself, your younger self, or perhaps alumni, your current students? I don't know. I mean, I feel like the best, like the best piece of advice, advice I received again, it's like, you know, there's, there's no such thing as an aspiring writer. And that to me, like that, like broke something inside my brain. Cause I think prior, and that was, you know, I was like two years into grad school at that point, And I was kind of fighting through this like imposter syndrome thing. You know, like it, a, it was weird being a 25 year old in an internship, which was a whole different situation just because I was a grad student. So, you know, I was sitting in the, in the internship cubby with like sophomores in college and I was like the dad. So it was very strange to begin with. And, but then I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? It's not going anywhere. It's not moving. Like then that spiral was happening. And I think like, you know, chatting with, with Seth about that was, it, it, it made me feel like, oh, right. This is just, this is the process. You just, there's, there's no door left to open. There's, I mean, yeah, there are like career, you know, industry doors to open, but like right now there's nothing stopping me from doing the thing that I want to do. I want to be a writer. I want to be a filmmaker. So I, I have to make, I have to literally have to make it now. And I feel like I was waiting for permission for a long time. And even at, even at Rutgers, like I only really, you know, there was like, it was just so busy. I was always making stuff, but I didn't know why I was making it. I always assumed I was making stuff because that like would lead to like someone handing me the key to something like the key to an office and like, Oh, congratulations. You've leveled up. Right. Like that doesn't happen. That, that will never happen. There'll be cool jobs that come in along the way. But like, I, I feel like it took me time to realize that I'm not waiting. I was waiting for my career to start. And what I realized is like, no, this is my career. Like I'm in it now. Like now's the time. This is, this is it. What am I waiting for? Right. And that's part of, part of the, that was part of the impetus that got, you know, that motivated me to get Canusa Street off the ground was like, like screw waiting. Like I'm, I, I'm done waiting. Let me just, let's do it. Like, cause now it's now time, you know? So I, I, I feel like that especially when I was in college, I, there was just the assumption that, you know, cause they tell you like, Oh, right. You go to school, you go to college, you graduate and you get a job. And what I've realized is like, especially in entertainment, especially in creative fields, your job is already started. Like this is, you're already, anyone listening to this is already in their career. So don't wait for it to start. Cause it's already started. And so I feel like that, like that took me a while to learn and I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it now as a 30 year old. <laughs> But, um, you know, that, that like just tr knowing that like where you are is where you're supposed to be instead of like always feeling like you're, you're waiting for something else, like embrace the now. And I feel like that, I don't know, baby Zach would have liked to hear that, I think.
Yeah, no, and I'm sure a lot of our current students and alumni really appreciate everything you've had to say. Well, now, thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I really appreciate you being here, being able to share such informative, um, but also a successful pedigree that you uh, sort of have going on as an artist and a filmmaker and a storyteller, and proudly representing uh, Rutgers as an alum. Um, would you mind sharing any of your social media handles to give our current students or alumni a chance to connect with you? Or yeah, you yeah, it? like across the board, um, at Zach Morrison 18 on everything. Um, which again, like it's you know, having like one handle for everything, that's that's great, it's easy. So, yeah, at you know, Zach Morrison 18 on Instagram, on Twitter, I think on Facebook, I think that's my thing on LinkedIn because you can do that on LinkedIn yes. now, I think. Um, I don't know, but yeah, that's, um, I'm, I'm everywhere. So you can find me. Um, but yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, Zach. And we look forward to connecting with you soon. Yeah. And thank, and thank you for joining for a Sky Career Talks today and why it's great to learn with us and communicate and be sure to share, like, comment, and subscribe and follow our LinkedIn page, Sky Career Corners, to connect with our brilliant students and alumni. Until next time, I'm David Chains. Take care.